Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the Plap, or Platypus is the name, and welcome to another Sword of Convalaria video. Today, we are talking about the new banner coming out in just a couple days, Get Together. And we're basically going to discuss what these characters do and whether or not you should pull on them, why you would want to consider pulling on them, why you wouldn't want to consider pulling on them. And basically, you know, we'll leave that decision up to you, but why I do or don't advise it. So let's jump into it. Uh, first of all, this is not going to be like a super in-depth character build guide for each of these, um, you know, with like team comps and equipment and skill trees. We're just going to be looking at the general theme of these units to kind of decide if that's what you want. So we are going to be going in game. We don't have a perfect picture because I don't currently have these units. However, we do get to see basically an, an example of what they could look like. So let's take a look here. So first, I'm actually going to look at Garcia. So Garcia, let's take a look at her initially. What is she and what does she do? <laughs> who Who is this waifu and what does she do? She, she basically is a scaling threat. So she has kind of this gimmick where she has a Beyblade. And I say that like as a joke, but really it is a Beyblade. It's like the shield and it spins and she throws it. Um, and it's every turn... At the start of every turn, she gains a spin. Basically, it, it speeds up. It gets faster and faster. Then when it gets a six stacks, it, it doesn't do anything when it gets a six stacks necessarily at one star level. As you get her as a higher level, you'll get different effects at three, six, and nine. But basically, as these goes up, you're just going to be doing more damage, right? Three stacks increases your crit. Six stacks increases your crit damage. Nine stacks eventually ignores target's block and 40% of the defense. And at the start of battle, you gain two stacks instead of one stack. So... She goes crazy at five stars, but basically she's going to get stronger over the course of a fight. So this is like one of her signature abilities, one of the main ones here. Single target attack deals 120% damage, and if you kill someone with it, you get an extra stack. So you start accelerating it faster. And when you have six stacks, you deal 45% more damage when you attack. A pretty cool thing. So other than that, what does she get? Um, she basically gets bonus damage when things are dying, which is kind of cool. You know, she keeps wanting to build these stacks up. And then when she has the stacks, she kind of just has like a lot of interesting passive. She's basically, I mean, it says hidden executioner. Her thing is executioner. That is what she does. She she is there to finish off targets. If there's no ally with one within one tile, sorry, of the target before attacking, she inflicts isolate, which means uh, she is no longer, you can't get aura effects, right? Um, and they can't dodge. Um... She actually has some pretty cool ranged attacks as well. You don't get to see them all here, but she has like the ability to throw this blade in a big AOE. But here is a uh, instant, selects one enemy within a cross-shaped range around her and drags them to her side, dealing 70% of damage, and she recovers her own energy when defeating any target. So you could use this to kill something, which any target means you could actually use this to pull. You wouldn't want to do it to pull an explosive barrel, but hypothetically you could if you really wanted to do something crazy. Um, but this is an instant speed, deals damage. Um, it's expensive, right? It is expensive. So if you don't kill the target, being able to follow up with another attack is going to be hard. You're not going to be able to do a three into another three without some help. But it is a pretty cool uh, instant ability that drags and deals some damage. Um, and then she also has this, she could dispel three debuffs on herself, recover HP, and gains potential burst which uh, gives her a boost, basically, right? Um, but really, like, her, her whole gimmick is every single... The first, the worst she is is on the first round of combat, and the best she is is the more stacks she gets. Once she gets up to nine stacks, and she's using this execution time, right? This is doing 165% damage while also ignoring all this block and doing all this stuff. Um, so it's a really cool thematic character. Um, overall, I think she's pretty low on the tier list. But I think she's really cool. Now, my issues with her is that most combats don't turn out to be that long. Like, she's not going to be good in PvP, is my guess, because it just, those combats are like three to four rounds, right? I don't know if she's actually going to get this here. And longer tower matches where you have a chance to really stack this up, um, she has some self sustain. She has good damage and is good at killing stuff as her stacks get up so i think she actually could be pretty good and this attack here is pretty cool you do 33 percent damage three times and if they're injured you get 25 percent crit that's honestly just a pretty cool passive ability there i like that a lot um but yeah i'm gonna pull her because i think she's a really cool character you might want her if you don't have cole and cole's out of the way because they're both kind of execution-y characters they're both seekers they fulfill similar roles um but cole is probably 
better on average, although I think she has more AoE and more scaling, where Cole is more burst him down in the right in the beginning of the combat. So if we're taking a look at Nungal here, Nungal is probably the star of this dual banner, the one that most people are going to want to get. She is basically a sniper. Uh, she is a all about that range. No trouble. So initially her crossbow it's kind of cool she you want to scale her physical damage but all of her physical damage is converted into magic damage so by scaling her physically you are going to get magic damage kind of unimportant but it's it's interesting i guess you know because she's strong but it's, she's using a basically a gun crossbow it's cool but she gets this really cool passive for each tile between uh, her and her target the adjacent tiles count as zero she gets 3% more damage up to 30, which that takes 10 tiles, which means 11 tiles because the adjacent tile counts as nothing. So that's a, the fact that they even bother putting up to 30 implies to me that you could get up to 10 or 11 tiles away, which is crazy. Um, if she does not move before attacking, increase the maximum range by one tile. So when she stands still, her range increases by one. Range up is incredible so even just by default here you have a one to three ability it's actually going to be a one to four ability and if you hit someone at four tiles away you're going to be doing three six nine uh nine percent more damage now obviously as you get more into the top end this gets more crazy um it's like for you get 15 percent crit and then you get five percent more damage up to 45 it's in 20 25 30 35 45 that's eight tiles that's actually easier to get maxed out um then you get one tile of thing as before but when attacking enemies outside of five tiles you get to ignore the reaction their preemptive and their strike back so they just sit there and they take it um but let's take a look at some of the abilities here that are going to be pretty good actually her her initial ability here is not that good this is a pretty generic ability i would not call this essential um it doesn't really build into her kit it's just a pretty decent ability but it's like one you're not going to have on her late game so a uh, really cool marking bullet. This is probably at a higher level. You get the upgraded basic attack, 85% damage, not good, but it does inflict move negative one. And again, this basically, if you don't move, have a, has a range of four and the hangman's mark gets added to a target. So she's going to fit really well as like a commander as the top end of the hangman's team um, because she could just apply it from very far away and then other enemies can execute it. Um, but she also has a way to exploit the hangman's mark as well as we're going to see here. This uh, this ability, I think, might be one of the craziest abilities in the game, though. Instant. She gets to switch between sniping stance and her skill switches to moving stance. Sniping stance makes it so you can't move, but you get the maximum range of your ranged abilities increased by two tiles. And it increases your attack and crit by 15%. Um, that means if you don't move and you use sniping stance, you have three more range. On an ability like this, which we'll get to in a second, that means you have a range of eight. Between three and eight. You can't, she's just going to snipe from across the fucking map, bro. I love this type of character. I absolutely love a character that is just able to, you can't run away. You can't run away. Good luck. She's just going to, if like you ever try to push up on her, she's just going to snipe you in the head. I love this ability. And then when you switch to moving stance again, I don't know if there's a cooldown between them or if you could switch back at maybe after a turn or something. Um, she gains a bunch of speed, so she gets to actually move again and her turn will come up uh, faster which is pretty cool. So uh, outside of that though, what are her actual attacks here? Uh, really quick, uh, sense of purpose, another passive here. When attacking enemies who have the Hangsman's Mark, which she could do with an attack, but other characters could do like passively at the end of their turn and other things like that. Um, you get 30% crit and 30% crit damage. And when you land a crit, you recover a uh, an energy. I don't know why it's, it's energy, N-R-G, energy. Um, I bet it is just energy, but they just, they did NRG instead. I don't know. Um, very good. So additionally, you recover it when you land a crit, which you're going to land a crit and you're going to do damage. Really good. Now, this ability is fucking awesome. It's even more awesome when we read the next ability, but target, single target attack prepares for one turn and then deals 160 damage to the enemy. Starting off, preparing for a turn kind of sucks. 160% damage isn't insane, but again, remember, this essentially has 3 to 8 range, so super far. And I don't know if you target an enemy and then they move, if you could hit them, if they run out of range. I don't actually know how it works mechanically, um, but that's something I'll figure out as I'm getting this character for sure. Um, but it does ignore block, which is kind of cool. When attacking enemies with the Hanged Man's Mark, you increase crit by 60%, and then it clears it. So this gives her 60% crit. This gives her 30% crit. 
and then 30% crit damage, and her passive can give her 15% crit. I mean, that's over 100% crit right there. So this is actually going to be doing quite a bit more damage than it looks like, um, especially because you're attacking them from really far away. You're getting guaranteed crits. You're doing extra crit damage. Incredibly good ability. But that one turn of where you have to sit there kind of sucks. But quick reload, instant speed, recovers three energy and reduces skill cooldowns by a turn, which is already pretty good. I like that. But then for three turns, Deadly Aim does not need to prepare for the turn. That means you could use Quick Reload, even if you haven't used this yes, yet, you have or you haven't. Um, ideally, you don't want to use it when you have three energy because you want to have two energy and go up to five. But basically, you could use Deadly Aim, boom, and then you could use like Quick Reload, Deadly Aim, Again, you'd, or, you know, you quick reload, then you could use deadly aim, boom, instantly. Next turn, you can't, but on the third turn, you could use deadly aim again and basically just blast the shit out of things. So huge range, high damage, very, very cool character. I think she's going to be like an all-star. Now, I do think Garcia is good, but I don't, I think she's kind of, she, just by, from reading her ability, she seems kind of mid, um, but a cool character, one that I'm actually excited to really try. Um, Nungal is a character you're probably going to want if you just really need some super good range. Like, if you don't really like Ballista, Ballista, like, wishes he was this. Um, she just does way more damage. Although, she's pro Ballista's probably way tankier. Um, but the range on this character is insane. Like, I, I think this outranges everything in the game. So, absolutely worth pulling if you're kind of lacking on archers in general. And the fact that she does magic damage does make her a bit niche in the archer category. Because um, a lot of mages are really strong, but they don't have very good range. This lets you hit with magic damage really far away through deep into enemy lines, which is just kind of badass. So this is coming out in just a few days. Should you pull on it? Should you not pull on it? I mean, I'm going to pull on it. Overall, this is probably not the absolute best banal to pull on. But um, if you spent a lot of your currency on coal and you spent a lot of your currency on barrel, it's probably worth saving for now. And then later, um, you know, because these guys are in the general pool, you're likely to get them. You're probably going to want to save for the next big banner character that comes out um, because like the it's like Safia, like Dandelion's other half, you know, basically what Nurgal and Nungal. There's also like Dantelion and then the girl that kind of looks like him. Right. And she's apparently freaking busted and she'll be coming out sooner rather than later. So you might want to save for that stuff. So I probably wouldn't pull on this for most people. However, if you have your pity is almost up and you want to take a role on getting Nungal, I think she is going to be crazy good on a lot of accounts. But really, it's going to be up to you and you're going to have to decide what is worth it to you and what is not worth it to you. Anyway, that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for Platypuses for Platypus. I'll see you on the flip-flops. Bye! Platypus on the rise.